Welcome to another exciting episode of College Football Update. I'm your host, Chelsea Williams, laying down the smack down on college football. So if you guys saw last week's episode, I got into a little bit of stuff. This week, we're going to get into more Week 7, all the crazy stuff, some BCS, and the Week 8. So without further ado, let's get it started. Oklahoma, Texas. That was a crazy game. Casey, McCow uh, Casey McCoy's brother, Colt McCoy from San Francisco, is one proud brother. His senior brother, number six, put up 13 to 21, 19, wait, 190 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. But that compares to nothing but the ground game. Even the defense went off. Big boy, 300 pounds, number 98, showed up. The whole offensive line for freaking Texas brought out the best to the point where Oklahoma could not do anything offensively. Uh, Malcolm Brown, Jonathan Gary, total yards combined is 243. That's 123 from Jonathan and 120 from freaking Malcolm. That's crazy because freaking Oklahoma is dominating on offense and defense, and what Texas did in that rivalry game is out of this world. I want y'all to know how crazy this is. Last year, freaking Sooners took out, oh, no, yeah, the Sooners took out Texas 63-21. 63 points. That's crazy top. But in the end of this one, 20 Oklahoma, 36 Sooners. Next game. Oh, man, I know you guys saw that Stanford-Utah. I know y'all saw that Stanford-Utah. That was some game. All I have to say for the reason why Stanford lost, Kevin Hogan. Come on, you're a bum. You're going to give up so many yards, two sacks. And what is this with an interception? Come on now. The fact that Utah not ranked low in the bottom of the Pac-12 can take out a ranked Stanford team in the last minute of the game? Crazy. And it all came down to the wire. Senior Kevin Hart can't do anything. Just crazy talk. The end of that one, 21-27. But let me tell you, side note, that play kind of ended the whole thing for the momentum on the sideline. I'm going to just say. But Stanford, got to step your game up. On to the final game, Florida LSU. That game really did was kind of like a chess match to me. Not a lot of big yards, not a lot of big touchdowns. Even Mettenberger couldn't get anything off. 19, no wait, 9 is 17 and only 152 yards. That's not his best considering the Georgia LSU game. Even Tyler Murphy, a junior on Florida, went off with 15 of 27 and 115 yards. But what made the game very interesting was LSU's defense giving Murphy four sacks in the whole game. Really interesting to see. I love the whole game. And to say the least, hey, I'll watch it again. Final on that one, LSU 17, Florida 6. Oh, man, good week of football, right? And now with the BCS standings, that shifted the whole thing. Big games, big matchups led to switches and shifts all in the standings. From Alabama, Oregon still remaining the same, but Clemson's going to come out on number three, Ohio, Ohio State 4, Florida State 5. The really surprising thing to me is that Stanford was ranked, originally ranked on Sunday, ranked 15. Then everybody had to shift them up back to 13. Even though they lost a, you know, a low-ranked, a non-ranked team, hey, they're not supposed to be down that far. I have a feeling that later on in the season, they're going to go off and do something great. So that's that one. On to the week eight. 
even though there's going to be some big games week eight, I will let you know right now, I kind of feel more shiftings within the rankings just because there's going to be a lot of ranked teams going up against each other. For instance, Stanford, UCLA. That's going to be one big game to see Brett Hundley, number 17 sophomore, putting up some points going up against Stanford. They have a grudge against them. And to see Hogan try to redeem himself from um, week seven's game, what can he do? The ground game is always impossible to beat for Stanford because that number 25 be putting up some points. But all I got to say is, if UCLA can play as dominant, unbeaten as usual, with a wonderful number 17 going off with a wonderful touchdown, and the quarterback doing his thing, uh, like his current, his current um, yards right now, this year, 1,469 yards, 12 touchdowns. Crazy. That's going to be a good game. Clemson, Florida State, another great one. To see a freshman James Whitson and a senior, Ty, uh, Tyjon Boyd, go at it is going to be something spectacular. To see Clemson's defense at its best go up against Florida State, who's trying to be up there, trying to be noticed, is going to be something good to see. Clemson's defense is the biggest thing for them. But if the freshman could put up his legs and do what he does best on the air as well as the ground, it's going to be a good game to watch. I don't know who I have in that one, but all I know is that game's going to be a good game, especially with that young man's arm doing all the work. Finally, Florida, Missouri. That's going to be a good one to see a team beating Georgia go up against a team losing to LSU. Which one's going to really pull out on top? Missouri has all the momentum on them to see that game with Georgia and all their dynamic players like James Franklin, quarterback, going on the whole sidelines. But Mac Brown, from the, the senior <laughs> running back from Florida, has to put up more yards. Currently, he's doing 91 attempts, 340 yards, and three touchdowns. But if that boy could find a seam, he can go off, especially with the pass game as well. Both All the games are going to be something good to watch, and I will check them out. Finally, since it's October, you know, scary things happening in the season. We got to talk about what happened week one through seven. Now, first day, first day is Jadamian Clowney. They gave him so much hype for this, this right here, this big old sack that he did on Michigan last year. Super crazy. I know you saw all over the friggin' ESPN all summer long, even leading up to the big first game. But after that, what was it? Oh, oh my God. That's not Jadavia. That's not Jadavia sitting on the sideline. I know that's not him. Injured, they say? No, that can't be him. Sickness? No, that can't be him. Wait, even the coach throws him on the bus for not playing. That's cray cray. <laughs> okay, but take this one, take this one, take this one. Mac Brown, okay? First, he was scared that he was going to lose his job from week one to week six. Now, week six, he won against Iowa, but he made the coach mad, and that was just an all-out referee call, like last year, Stanford, Notre Dame. I ain't going to get into that one. But once he did work on the Red River rivalry game, Oklahoma, that kind of changed his perception, and they calling him Napoleon the whole way through putting his dominance all over that Oklahoma team. Now he's one happy coach. Look at that smile. I mean, look at that smile. That ain't really what I see. What I see is more of a movie kind of thing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good being, hey, you won two games and you're bringing back Texas's look. The bad is how you win and all this other stuff that had to get you to your point now. The ugly, which I pray kind of that's going to happen is if the season ends how you guys want it to and I'm saying nothing nothing under 12 with all the wins and you guys have to beat those big games you guys know what I'm talking about but that's not the scariest thing this is the scariest thing Lane Kiffin see before they were saying oh Lane Kiffin can't fill in the seats and stuff like that that's what all the press is saying when, when USC finally does something, 
kicks him out and gets him off. They're like, what did you do? You got him. I'm like, you have to be a part of the Trojan lifestyle to understand the Trojan decision. Because if you're going to talk so much smack on the sidelines and not know, then you're not even a part of it. Because look at what happened afterwards. When he's kicked out, the stadium's filled up, the players can play, and guess what? They got to win. I don't hear a lot of talking then, but, hey, what can I say? I'm just so scared because you know what the scariest part is? Football ain't even over yet. We got 10 more weeks, and then the Super Bowl, not the Super Bowl scratch that, the bowl games, and all this other stuff. Macaulay Culkin, what do you have to say about this? I couldn't agree with you more. Well, that's all my time. I hope you guys watch all the games. You guys get all your fill in and you know that this ain't over yet. Because even though the week is coming slowly, our, all our games are coming to a close, and we all have school spirit, and we're going to show it off because it's going to happen. There's more good games coming up, and I'm just excited as well as you guys are. So, Chelsea Williams here at the booth, college football. Keep watching. Have a good night.